All right. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I, I, we're going to pray at the end, but I just pray and wish all the fathers that would be well. Because you lead your families. You lead, you are the backbone of society. So we bless you today in Jesus' name. So can we have our slides? That's right. So today I'm going to talk about peace. As you see the title, The Way to Peace. We all need peace, right? Mothers need peace. Fathers need peace. And fathers need peace, mothers need peace, and children need peace. Even animals need peace. They thrive in peace. They love peace. So the way to peace. Today I chose this to talk about peace because we need, all of us, we need peace. We have gone through three years of turmoil, uncertainty, and I noticed it made a big, big dent in every person, in our brains, in our thoughts, in our emotions, and we're looking for that place where we can restore that peace. Today, we are going to invite the Prince of Peace to walk in and to come and to comfort each one of us. Let's go to the next slide. So when we talk about way, there is a right way and there is a wrong way. Many times we don't know which way to go. It is important to gather information, seek advice, and weigh the consequences before making a decision. Ultimately, it is up to us to choose the right path and learn from our mistakes if we end up going the wrong way. We have a choice. We have a choice to go right. We have a choice to go left. When we are trying to enter somewhere, we look for signs and we make sure we know if we are headed in the right direction. That is why we have the signs wrong way when you're entering the wrong way. For you to know this is the wrong way, it could be dangerous, especially when you're entering the wrong way in the freeway. In life, we have right ways and wrong ways. And many times, we don't know which way to take. There is a fine line. Sometimes it's not clear for us. There is a fine line between the right way and the wrong way. And we stop and ask, which way should I go? In Romans 3.17, talks about people who who do not know the way of peace. We will look into this verse a little later. In this verse, it talks about the way of peace. We know to look for the right direction, follow the right map, or get an expert opinion to know the right way. But now we need to ask, which way should we go for peace? Which way? I'm looking for peace in my soul. I'm looking for peace in my emotions, in my mind. And we ask ourselves, which way should I go? The Bible talks about this verse in Romans 3.17. Let's look at the verse. And the way of peace they have not known. Either they lost it and they, or they've never found it. So this, from these scriptures, we're going to look at more scriptures to see which way we can go that we lose our peace. But first, let's establish this. Can we have the next slide? Let's establish the source of peace. Who is the source of peace that gives us peace? You see the scriptures, but we're not going to read the whole scripture. I'm not going to read the whole scripture. Just going to read the parts that applies to this message. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. 
In 2 Thessalonians 3.16, we read on to say, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. In Hebrews 7.2, let's read the second part. It says, And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. In this verse, it talks about Melchizedek, that was the king of Salem. And Jesus also is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Isaiah 9, 6, we read on to say, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So we see these four titles, God of Peace, Lord of Peace, King of Peace, and a Prince of Peace. You probably all figured it out who this person is. His name is? His name is? That's right, Jesus, and Jesus is Lord of Peace. So all of us together, we are going to say the four titles of Jesus. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to have you say it, okay? Jesus is? No. Jesus is God of Peace. That's right. And a prince of peace. So whenever you run out of peace, you can say those things. Jesus is the king, is the God of peace, king of peace, Lord of peace, and a prince of peace. Amen? Okay, so let's look at the wrong way. Which is the wrong way to go? Okay, let's look at Isaiah 59, 7, 8. That's right, 59, 59, 7, 8. It says, their feet run to evil, and they make his haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their path. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. We hear the thoughts of the thought, their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. You probably is going to ask me right now. We are all believers. Why are you speaking to us about following evil things and, and wasting and destruction in our paths? We all follow Jesus, right? And we try to do our best to follow Jesus. But you know what? Here it says... That the people who think thoughts of iniquity, they lose their peace. They lose the way to peace. And how many times during the day we get bombarded with thoughts of iniquity? We are going to look at the definition of iniquity. Let's look at the next slide. A concise dictionary of the words in the Greek testament and the hebrew bible describes iniquity as come to come to not strictly nothingness trouble vanity wickedness idol affliction evil false idol how many times we think of false thoughts and we lose our peace that we don't think of you know what I grabbed the thoughts of iniquity. I lost the way to peace. I need to come back to remember what Jesus had said about me. What Jesus said about the false things. We also get bombarded with idle thoughts. We just sit there and our thoughts go looping we go it goes on and on and on and it, it starts with negativity and get goes in, gets into more negative and more negative and more negative and there are times you feel like hey I, I'm, I'm going to lose my mind what do I do about this then you remember you lost your way to peace 
And we need to remember to come back, to confess our iniquities, to confess our idle thoughts, to confess the false that we believe, that the enemy has told us that we're not good enough, that we are failing, that we're failing as parents, that we're failing financially, that we're not good enough. The enemy comes and he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And he does this till this day. He comes to kill your peace, to steal your peace, and for you to have a doubt. Am I really a child of God? Am I really allowed to live in peace? Can I be in peace when I'm in turmoil, when I'm in storms, when I'm facing storms in my, in my life right now? We are going to look at the verse, Romans 3, 11 through 17. This is what it says. No one understands. No one searches for God. All have turned away. They have become completely worthless. No one knows kindness. Not even one person. Their throats are open graves. With their tongues, they deceive. The venom of poisonous snakes is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They run swiftly to shed blood. Ru ruin and misery characterize, characterize their lives. They have not learned the path to peace. They turn away from God. They are not kind. They speak death over themselves or over their situations or over others. They lie. They poison the minds of others with their speech. They curse and they are bitter. This is practically what this verse is saying. They are miserable and they have not learned the way of peace. How many times when we feel we're not enough or how many times we feel like we failed or we make a mistake we speak death over our lives how many times those words of death comes out of our mouth and goes into our ear and registers into our brain and then we feel sorry for ourselves we even feel sorry that we were born we're such a losers I'm not just talking to you because I experienced things like that in my life too. Well, are all, all humans. I'm not teaching this stuff to condemn you. I'm teaching this stuff for you to have awareness. For you to know you are headed the wrong direction. Turn away. It's like when you're trying to enter the freeway. It says wrong direction. It's like, oops, I can't enter that. And I want you to remember every time these negative thoughts come. I want you to remember, say, oops, I'm going to lose my peace. I'd rather not go there. I want you to remember the words of this preaching, of this teaching. Because you do have control over your thoughts. Many people come to my counseling sessions and when I tell them, empower them, that they, have, that they have control over their thoughts, they can choose what to think, they can choose what to toss away, they get surprised. Not every, th uh, not every thought that crosses your mind, you need to be thinking about that. And not every thought that crosses your mind, you need to feel like even bad thoughts crosses your mind and like... <gasps> I am such a bad person. You're not a bad person. It's just a negative thought. You're probably tired. You're probably hungry. You're probably going through stress. Something is happening in your life. You have a choice to choose which thought to think. Amen? That's right. I want you to be empowered today and take control over those negative thoughts. Let's look at the right way 
I lost the track of time. How much do I have? All right. The right way. Let's look at the right way. Are you so far enjoying it? Great. Let's continue. The right way. The right way to peace is, step, is a step designed to teach you how to restore your peace whenever you lose it or whenever you need it. We're going to practically, I'm going to teach you how to do this in a practical way. So whenever you know, okay, I'm headed the wrong direction, come back to the right direction and you can do these things. You can even take a picture of the slides that we're going to do because in between we're going to have prayers. In our emotional turmoil, we need to invite the Prince of Peace into our lives to restore our tranquility and have peace that guards our hearts and minds. Remember what the verse says, that his peace guards our hearts and minds. I will be sharing some verses about the peace and have written down prayers and we are going to pray together. Let's look at Matthew 10, 12. Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, as you enter the house, he, he called his disciples two and two and he sent them out and he sent them into people's houses. And then he said, as you enter the house, greet its occupants. If the household is receptive, let your blessing of peace come on it. But if it isn't receptive, let your blessing of peace return to you. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, you have the peace that surpasses every understanding. Because we establish the source of peace. He's the king of peace, lord of peace, prince of peace, and, and, and so on. So Jesus is saying, I am giving you my peace. Not as the world gives you, but I'm giving you my peace. And that peace is in you. So you go to each household and you say, greetings. I brought you peace. Who wants more peace? Let's, let's hear hands. Let's see hands. Who wants more peace? So then it says, but they need to do something in order for them to receive that peace. You probably could tell from the scripture. It says, if the household is receptive. If the household is receptive. Sometimes, my dear people, when we get into that looping, into that despair, into that negativity, we're not receptive. We're not receptive even to read the word of God or hear the word of God or listen to a counsel. Because that bitterness closes our hearts so we need to be receptive with our hearts and with our mind at that moment we need to put aside our childish emotional um, reactions right and be act acting as an adult and and saying you know what lord I am receptive to receive peace. I lost my peace. I need my peace now. This is the prayer we're going to pray together. Let me ask you this, Beth. When you want to receive something, what do you do? Bell, right, Bell. That's right. Did you see Bell? Bell, can you show? Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put our hands as we are going to receive something. So I want to see with all, all of you, in a receptive position. This is actually, you're saying to the Lord, I am, I am willing to receive. Here are my hands. I'm willing to receive. Amen? So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I receive your peace. And let your blessing of peace come on me. Amen. The next verse is Luke 1, 78, 79. It says, through the tender mercy of God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, 
to give us light to those who sit in darkness and in shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. To guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the ISV version. Because of the tender mercy of God, his light from on high has visited us to shine on those who sit in darkness and in that shadow and to guide our feet onto the way of peace. Luke 178 79 reminds us the tender mercy of God and how his light shines in those who are lost in darkness. We sometimes, as believers, we face darkness that comes against us. And that I want you to remember, his light shines over that darkness, over that situation. When we pray, we invite this light into our lives, allowing it to guide us toward the path of righteousness. Through prayer, we can find solace and comfort in times of distress. And we can seek guidance when we are lost or confused. Sitting in darkness and in death's shadow could be the difficult places that we are experiencing. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's receive it. Let's put our hands in a receiving position. Thank you, God, for your tender mercy and your light that have visited me to shine on me in my difficult places and guide my feet into the way of peace. I don't know if you're feeling and sensing. Who's sensing peace, more peace that you had before? I'm, sen I'm, I'm receiving peace right now as I'm preaching. You know, because this is not my peace. This is Prince of Peace. He walks into this door and he gives us that peace. John 20, 19. It was the evening of the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them. He told them, peace be with you. As we see in John 20, 19, the disciples were afraid and locked themselves in a house after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. However, Jesus appeared to them and offered them peace. This is a reminder that even in the midst of fear and uncertainty, we can find peace through our faith in God. When we trust in God's plan for our lives and surrender our fears and worries to him. Do you have fears? Then, Lord Jesus is saying to you, peace be with you. When peace comes, fear disappears. Let's pray this prayer together. Jesus, speak your peace to me in my despair, confusion, and fear. Now what you're going to do is you're going to say this. Peace be with you, and you're going to name your name. So I'm going to say Sona, but don't repeat as Sona. You say your name, okay? So, peace be with you, Sona. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard, will guard, guard. That means we need guarding. If the scripture says it will guard our minds and hearts, that means we need guarding. Our hearts need to be guarded. Our minds need to be guarded. We need to be guarded. And it says the peace that Jesus gives us, it does that. It does that very same thing. It guards our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Imagine you have a strong shield on your mind and on your heart 
from Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank him for that. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on those things. The things which you learned and received and heard and so in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Hallelujah. Did you see the exact opposite? We read the verses in Romans and in Isaiah that if we think of thoughts of iniquity, we found out what those are. And then we think about idle thoughts. When we speak lies, when we speak deceit, when we speak death, when our mouth becomes graveyard, that's what it is. We're speaking death. That's what graveyard is. The, the dead buried in the graveyard, right? So it's the exact opposite. In Philippians 4, 7, and 9, it's saying... Think about these things. So you can ask yourself, whenever a thought comes, how can you differentiate if this is the wrong way or this is the right way? When it's stealing your peace, when you are afraid, when you are not thinking about pure things, about just things to do, about what is true, what is virtue, then it will steal our peace. In a world that can often feel overwhelming and negative, it is important to focus on the good things in life. As the Apostle Paul wrote, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. Meditation is done by conscious decision. Making a conscious decision to meditate. You have to take the time to meditate. You need to be intentional. By intentionally seeking out the positive aspects of life, we can cultivate a more optimistic and grateful mindset. I am not teaching positive mindset all the time. That's not what I'm teaching. What I want you to remember is look at the reality because the reality has two aspects. The reality of life has positive things and the reality of life has negative things. When something bad is happening to you or you are sitting in darkness, automatically you will go into negative. But I want you to remember that you have a choice to make at that moment. And then you can intentionally transfer your thoughts and your feelings from losing your peace to gaining your peace. Because in peace, peace is a breeding ground for revelation. Have you ever noticed when you were in turmoil, in emotional turmoil, God was not speaking to you? God speaks to us, but because we are in emotional turmoil, we don't hear his voice. When we establish that peace in us, in our mind, in our heart, that guards that, that mind of ours, and it guards our heart then the revelation comes. Then Jesus speaks. Then you remember all of a sudden a verse or a promise that God gave you. And then, then you have to stay on it. And not waver. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's receive his peace. God of peace, 
the Lord of Peace, the King of Peace, and the Prince of Peace come, come into my life. I invite you into my situation right now. Please come and stop my anxious thoughts and worries. Amen. Practicing these things regularly can help you cultivate more peace in your life and become more centered and grounded. Remember that finding inner peace is a journey, not a destination. So be patient with yourself and keep practicing because you can't get this from the first time. You will need this, you will need to practice this until it becomes a rigid way of thinking until you repair your brain. Amen? Amen? In conclusion, I want to tell you a story. We have a bird. His name is Mickey. He's a parrot. He's a small, naughty parrot. He thinks he's our child. He calls me mama. He calls my husband as daddy. He speaks. He speaks few words. So recently, uh, a month or so, he got very sick. And, and he's 16 years old, and for all that um, 16 years, he's never seen a vet. So he got sick. In the middle of the night, we, we heard a bump, and we realized Mickey fell off his perch. And that's a very bad sign for a bird. That means the bird is very, very sick. It's close to dying. So we rushed to him, and me and my husband rushed to him and he was under his cage and he was all all confused disoriented and at some point I thought he could not see us so we grabbed him we put him in our hands and we took turns to pray for him <laughs> it was it was really disoriented he could not fly he was off balance I don't know if either he was having a seizure or stroke or something he lost his peace our bird lost his peace so what happened when we prayed, he came back to being normal. And then at night, we start looking for a vet. And we didn't know that it's very difficult to find a vet for exotic birds. So we searched and searched and searched. We found a clinic, an uh, emergency clinic that could see us in Cal Culver City, right? In Culver City. So we drove 50, 50 minutes <laughs> to take him to the hospital. So we took him there, they, they did blood test on him, they did IV on him, and this, this big, okay? And then he was biting them and we were telling them, we, we told the, the person who was going to take him in a cage, we're like, be careful, he's a biter, he, he will bite you. And then when she returned the cage, she said, thank you for warning us because he did try to bite us. And then um, they did all these kind of tests and they gave us medication and the nurse told us, I mean, it wasn't the vet. I don't know what you call them. I don't think it's a nurse, but let's say it as a nurse, okay? Nurse for birds. <laughs> she told us, um, he has, Mickey has a big cage and he has a traveling cage, which is smaller cage. Okay, he, he, she told us, keep him in a smaller cage. Let him sleep in a smaller cage because just in case if he drops again, the fall is not a big fall because he could break his neck and die from it. And then she said, and cover him really well. Let him sleep. He needs to sleep 12 hours and give him this medication. We said, okay. We took him home. So he's, he's used to sleeping in his castle. It's a big cage, you know. And then now it's the, it, the time came that he needs to sleep. And we covered and he started complaining. He's in a smaller cage. He started complaining. He started like whining. And he's letting us know he doesn't like it. He doesn't want to sleep in a smaller cage. The next morning I woke up, the Lord spoke to me this. And I wanted to share this with you. The Lord said to me, think about this. Mickey's brain and your brain. And Mickey's saying this to you. Mickey's saying this to you. What happened to him yesterday? I don't understand why my parents are taking me to this journey. 
What is this place? What are these foreign people around me? And why are they poking me? Why are they taking my blood? Why are they hurting me like this? What's going on? Did my mom and leave dad did my mom and dad leave me? I am all alone. Nobody cares for me. And I don't understand why do I need to sleep in this small cage? Why I have this castle, I have this big cage, it's comfortable for me, and they want me to sleep in this smaller cage. My mommy and daddy forsook me. They don't love me anymore. I am all alone. Don't we do that? We do it like the same exact thing. And then the, co the, the communication in my head turned to me talking to Miki, saying, Miki, you will probably never, never understand why we did this to you. But we're trying to love on you, rescue you, give you better health, find out what's wrong with you, so you will not die, but have long life and healthy life to live. And then the communication in my head turned to me versus God. And sometimes God is placing me in places or putting me in places where I was like, God, this is not comfortable. Ah, I want out, out. God says, you need to stay there. You don't understand it right now, but I'm going to use it for something good in your life. I'm going to teach you something. I am saving you. Sometimes God is putting you in that smaller place or a narrow place because God is saving you from something. We will never, ever, ever, ever understand why God does these things in our lives. Sometimes we do, but sometimes we can't. Because our brain is comparison of Miki's brain with my brain. Come on now. How can Miki's smaller brain understand my capability, my thinking, my seeing, and why am I doing these things to him? You will never understand everything, why these things are happening in your life. But the fact is they are happening. And God has never left you. You are not alone. You are not walking this journey alone because he promised you he will never leave you nor forsake you. This week, I had a counselee, and we had a very profound conversation. I want to share this with you, and we'll end with this. I don't know how many minutes I, I preached, but it seems like you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And then we're going to do some prayers. So, um... I asked her, I said, oh, I have been counseling her for months. And then she said this to me. She said, through counselings, I came closer to the Lord. I feel closer to the Lord. And I said, it's interesting. We didn't do Bible study, even though it's biblical counseling. I share verses from the word of God. And I pray each time, every session. I start with prayer and with prayer. I said, I didn't do much to give you spiritual growth. I'm curious what contributed to what contributed. And she said, I had a relationship with God with my feelings. Whatever I felt that day, that's what I felt. God was close to me, or God was aloof, or God was far, or I was alone. She said, but you taught me something through the counseling. She said, you taught me not only to go with my feelings and with my thoughts, but to stay on the truth, the word of God. She said, I learned that even though I feel like I don't feel like God is loving me, but God says that he loves me, then I am going to believe that he loves me. She said, when you told me and she had trust issues. And she said, when you told me, I can trust God. And you showed me the pathway, how I can trust him. She said, I no longer go with my feelings alone. I want you to understand, feelings are important. I'm a biblical counselor. I teach about emotions. I, I teach about healthy emotions. We need to be healthy emotionally. 
God created us with emotions. Feelings are a very important part of who we are. But what I want you to remember, there is a balance between our feelings and our mind. We can't just think rational all the time. We need to feel it too. And we cannot just go emotional all the time. We need to bring the word of God. And those two comes and brings a balance. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. We are headed in more difficult days. The direction our culture is going, you probably all know it. People are looking for peace. They don't know where to find it. They're looking in wrong places. But we know that Prince of Peace. We have found him. Let's stay on that way and not divert from it. As you learn this, practice it and come to Jesus. If you, if you need peace in some area of your life, if you are facing a storm and if you want, if you want me to pray for you, come forward. Come forward. I'm going to lay my hands on you and pray for you. For you to receive peace. I'm sure you probably already have received peace because of the prayers. But you might say, I need peace. And I'm very, in a very difficult situation. Let's speak God's peace over that situation right now. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. There is a father here that is questioning God's mercy. And he's saying, God, I know you are merciful, but I, 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 I want to see your mercy in my life. So I speak your mercy, Father, that you will show your mercy yes. to this father. Show your mercy to this father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. I thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, move. Move among your congregation. Move among your beloved people. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Come, Prince of Peace, restore our peace. Come, Lord of Peace, come, God of Peace, peace, peace you give unto us. Peace. I speak peace over anxious thoughts. I speak peace over fears. I speak peace over financial difficulty. I speak peace, your peace, O Lord. Ne crisa do mare cum se denio Peace peace rain down from heaven Peace peace rain down Rain down rain down rain down rain down Come holy spirit He have broken dreams. Lord, restore the broken dreams. Dreams, oh Jesus, 
broken dreams be restored. Peace. The Lord loves you. You are the pupil of His eye. He's guiding you. He's showing you His mercy. He is your Father. He is your anchor. He is your mother. He is everything you need. He will guide you. He will guide you. Lord, I pray guidance, guidance over Belle. Guide her steps, guide her steps. Sicromia No more anxiety, no more anxiety in the name of Jesus. Be established in the peace of God. Be established in the peace of God. Establish minds and hearts in the peace of God. Establish peace, peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Father, I pray for her. What is your name? Feb. She's precious in your sight. You knew her from her mother's womb. You called her your own child. Your thoughts are numerous for her. You have good thoughts for her, thoughts of peace to keep her future and hope. I pray healing, healing that will take place in your thoughts and mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for my brother. I pray your healing to come over him right now. Let him be healed, Lord Jesus, physically, mentally, emotionally. Let the Father's love, let him know the Father's love. Let him know the Father's love. Deep, deep, deep love of the Father. Deep love of the Father. Let him be healed. Let him be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For those who would like to Thank you, Jesus. Feel free to come up here. And the Lord is saying is to you, you, my beloved, my beloved, my beloved Ida. Father, I thank you for your daughter. I pray for financial provision, for security and wellness. In Jesus' name right now. Let the fire of God come upon her right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Provision of finances, 
wellness and security. In the name of Jesus, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You received it. You received it. You received it. Yes, Jesus. You received it. He gave it. You received something. You received something. Hallelujah. Come, precious sister. There is a gift of music in this place. I felt when you both were playing and the way you were worshiping, there is a gift of music in your church. And I want to pray. I want to pray for the gift of music to be enhanced in your church. And that it will be used in places that they need your gifts. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, for all the worship team that worship together. Together, Lord, Bell, and for this precious man, Lord, he's, he has a gift. The way you were carrying your guitar, the way you were playing those tunes, it was anointed, brother. It was anointed. Met the anointing. Can you lay, lay hands on him? May the anointing of the Holy Spirit come over him right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And let him pray and let him compose songs that it would be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that it, he will write songs where, where, wherever he will play, people will be touched. Lord, I pray for the worship team and pray for Bell. And in, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would enhance the gifts and this anointing that you have given them. And they will be able to go out, out of this church and even do concert or do things and, 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 and bless other people with their gifts. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are weary and tired. And the Lord is saying to you, my daughter, my strength is sufficient for you. You are strong in your weaknesses. Don't look at how much strength you got. Look at what he has for you. Press through. Press through in the name of Jesus. Press through. Press through. Press through. Press through. Press through until you come to the valley of peace. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace over your circumstances. No more weariness. I pray strength. Strength. Strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, what, what do you have for Svetlana? She's searching and looking for the truth. And the truth is right here. The truth is right in her. The truth is in you, Svetlana. The truth is in you. I pray that that truth will set you free. In the name of Jesus. That the truth will set you free from your fears, anxieties, anything that is bothering you in Jesus' name. That the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this your daughter? <laughs> is sister. Your sister. Where is your daughter? She's in the back teaching. Oh, she's doing children's ministry. I want... Oh, she's right there. Okay, I want to pray for your daughter too. If anybody else still wants to be prayed for, this is the time to come up name, here sweetie? and just be ready hey. to receive from the Lord. We thank you for Hey. You are such a free-spirited person, but I see heaviness in you. And that is kind of in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be released. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released of who you are and who God wants you to be. You are free in Him. You are free in Him. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Whom sun sets free, they are free indeed. Let her be free to do whatever you called her to do she's best at what you called her to do thank you father release her release her release her 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I see you walking in a valley, in a green valley. I see you walking and singing and talking with the Lord. And you're having a good time with him. The Lord is calling you in his peace. So, Father, I pray that her mind and heart will be guarded by her, by your peace. Through Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank you for Julia, Lord Jesus. Thank you for her. Julia, I had this vision praying for you even before I came to, to, to church. And I knew that the Lord wanted me to pray for you. You are his jewel. Julia, you are God's jewel. You are his most treasured possession. God loves you. And his love for you is so deep. Deeper than the ocean. Deeper than the ocean. And I pray, Father, breathe your life upon her right now. Your love upon her right now in the name of Jesus. And let her receive. Receive what you have for her. The presence of God. Commune with the presence of God. You have a covenant with the living God. Don't forget that covenant. He had made a covenant with you. And he has not forgotten that. Thank you, Lord. God honors his covenant, Julia. And God honors the covenant he had made with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, such a peace came over you. Did you feel that? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow, what a precious daughter. The Lord is saying to you, don't look back. Do not look back. Look forward. What you have missed, what you have lost, it's gone. The Lord is going to do what he did with Job. Double restoration in Jesus' name. I pray double restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Greater is he who is in you than the one in the world. Greater is he who is in you than the one in the world. Greater is he who is in you than the one in the world. The Lord wants you to remember that. Don't look at the world to look at the world as a scary place. Because what you carry inside is greater than anything in the world. In the name of Jesus, I pray healing over her heart, over her mind, and over her body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name. We rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus in your life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Oh, the steps of the righteous person is guided by the Lord. The Lord is going to guide you for this couple of months. For the upcoming couple of months, the Lord is going to start guiding your steps. And then it's going to go so fast, you're not even going to know how you found where, where you are. How did you find the path where you are, where you're going to be or where you're going to walk? Lord, I pray your blessing over her shoes, over her feet, over her knees in the name of Jesus. And I pray that she will be guided by the Lord, that her feet will be guided by the Lord, that she will not go in the wrong places, but she will be guided by the Lord to head the right direction in Jesus' name. Enemy, stop what you are speaking to her, the false, the lies in the name of Jesus stop right now i speak words of life over her in jesus name right now in jesus name amen thank you lord thank you jesus i want to pray for all the fathers do we have fathers here or potential fathers right <laughs> who want who wants to be a father right <laughs> so father i thank you i thank you for all the men all the fathers here First, I want to pray for 
men who are not fathers yet but they have a desire to father to be a father you are a spiritual father to many and the Lord is saying to you he has seen your work he has guided your steps and he loves you and he is your father father I thank you Lord I pray for any young man who wants to father a child that you would release your anointing and your provision to for, to find the right family to raise their children in the name of Jesus I pray for all the fathers who already have children raising their children I pray your wisdom your blessing your healing your provision to come over them and I pray for the father of this house for their pastor I pray Lord Jesus that you would strengthen him refresh him uphold him and give him a new horizon for new visions that you carry through him thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord let it come forth through the pastor the vision that you have for this church to reach out to the community and I pray Lord Jesus that the gift of music that is coming from this church that it will be used in the community thank you Lord in Jesus name I pray amen amen, amen. amen. let's praise him yes. let's applaud him thank you Jesus Thank you, Lord. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Whenever we call on your name, you will yes. be there for us. Yes. This one last thing I want to tell you. Before when I was called, you can continue the music. Before when I was called to preach, I was really scared. I didn't know honestly what I was doing. I didn't have much education. I was doing medical billing and coding. And the Lord told me one day I'm no longer to do that and to serve God so I was scared and I remember for a few years when I would stand here and preach doesn't matter if it was in our church or in any other churches or any conferences I was invited to speak I would literally feel the hand of God on my head and as if the Lord was giving me reassurance saying this is me continue doing it this is me continue doing it I don't feel that right now as I was worshiping in your church today I didn't even feel the presence of God but this is what I said to the Lord I came here by faith I know you want me to do this I am ready with my message you move through me faith cannot be felt all the time you can have the faith and stand in the Word of God and command those things to leave your life without feeling that the Lord is close to you or not because the Word of God is powerful the Word of God is a two-edged sword the Word of God will do whatever it's designed to do in my life and in your life as you saw today you felt the presence of God right did you guys feel the presence of God I didn't feel any presence of God this was just act of faith mm. I usually feel strong presence of God but I didn't feel it today but it doesn't mean there was no presence of God right. I knew by faith I'm supposed to be here why am I telling you this today because in your darkness or it's, there would be some situation the Lord will send you to speak or to do something you would not feel the Lord's presence but he's saying to you stand firm on my word I am the Prince of Peace I am the King of Peace I am the Lord of Peace and peace will be in your house Amen, Amen. Hallelujah